Hello. Hi. No, for the the viewers, this is not an episode of Cocktails and Crime. This is Unexplained Realms. We're doing the interview series, and guess who I have? The host, uh, creator, and brain behind Cocktails and Crime, the podcast. Hi. Super guys happy are- to be over here. We've been yeah. we've been talking about this collab Finally. for a while. And yes, we have the space buns going on. That was totally fun. She had My the first gun. In, though. They are mine is retarded, but like you had them first, and then I got jealous, so I had to do mine. And yeah, here we are. Here we are. are. Wait, isn't it proper though? It's May the fourth. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's also it's so funny because it's also the day that Alice found down the rabbit hole. I saw that, and that you got married, I believe. I did. It is my wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. I I wanted an October wedding. Mm-hmm. I let my husband pick our wedding date because you mm-hmm. know I, I feel like it's kind of a the wedding thing is such an argument of it's the woman's day. I agree, we literally yeah. had this conversation in the truck, and I was like, I don't agree though. It's such a joint thing for me, mm-hmm. so I let him pick our wedding day. I totally should have been selfish and been like, it's my day. But right. I got married on fucking Star Wars Day because I let him pick I love it, though. May the fourth be with you always, right? Exactly. I, Actually, somebody wrote that on with this big picture, and we let people sign, like, the canvas or whatever. And we had, like, mm-hmm. four people write that. I, I had a weird wedding. When we decided the day, like, I don't even know. Like, it was just this week. We're, we're weird. We're, like, we're really weird. We wear black. We're, we're very dark kind of people. You, you see, he's the director at Unexplained Realms. Yeah. Partially, partially his creation as well as baby as well. And um, so, like, it, it just didn't seem to be a question. We needed to get married on Halloween. <laughs> like it just had to be. So I wanted happy. an October wedding, but I wanted mm-hmm. to get married in Vegas in a 24 hour chapel, middle of the night by, by Elvis. Oh, like, uh, I wanted, I wanted Grant. To, you know, the Harry and Lloyd suits from like dumb and dumber. Oh like, my I gosh. Wanted, that been amazing. I wanted the Harry and Lloyd, ugly blue and orange. <laughs> tacky, tacky. That would and be fun. Uh, I don't think either side of our family was really on board with that. Oh, so no. um, it's not their had, day, though. So. We had the, the actual like big poofy dress and the whole nine yards. So if we ever do our vows, mm-hmm. get, get to him because we're going to Vegas in September. There um, you go. So hopefully I get to be there too. Yeah, hopefully I get to be there too. It'll be my maid of horror. <laughs> yes. So I got married in a black cardigan that went to my ankles and knee-high leather boots. Because I pretty much wear black 24-7, 365. Um, yeah, it was, it's, yeah. I, I'm not the whole puffy white dress kind of girl. So if I, I had to wear a puffy dress, it's going to be black. Just saying. My colors were black and like blood red <laughs> and mm. with like some really dark uh i had like the nightmare before christmas colors kind of going mm. in there so i this, at least threw some mm, my, yeah. there you go this is not my first marriage though unfortunately i've been married once before and that one i had the big puffy white dress and uh total mexican wedding and you know it was um burgundy I've and gained, gold with black and i've gained you know. a lot of weight since we got married because they say when you get happy you know you gain weight mm. well, obviously I'm oh, really yeah, happy. Fat and happy so right. if it wasn't for that i would have totally put my wedding dress on today and gone and ate crawfish in my wedding dress that i'm be not, that <laughs> not even gonna lie so moving on um, you you noticed I found it. I found it. I don't know. I was going to ask yeah. you about that. If I our viewers wearing it, if our viewers watch Cocktails and Crime, they're going to see that I was throwing a fit over this necklace. Um, it's a black obsidian. It's very special to me. Um, I had it blessed by a shaman in Santa Cruz, California. Um, there's at least one other person in the world who, at the time, was definitely my best friend, and I bought him one as well. Maybe he still has that. Um, but they were both blessed, and um, so I could I put it in the same spot every day, right, all the time. I don't wear it every day. Sometimes it go for days where I wear it. Anyway, I got up one morning with the intentions of putting it on, and it wasn't there. Weeks went by, could not find it, and. 
this week I was washing towels and folding them and putting them away. So when I put them away, I bumped into the blow dryer, knocked that down, picked it up, wound it back up. When I went to put it on the shelf, I saw this just sitting there, just sitting in the shelf, in the towel clo linen closet. Like, what, what are you doing there? So How did it get there? Like, who did that? Um, it's just weird. It's the ghost. I swear this place is haunted. Like, I'm pretty sure it's haunted. I'm telling you, I believe it is. You told me too many stories where I'm like, mm, I think it mm -hmm. is. Doors close on their own. I feel things like touch my face at night. And I'm like, mm -hmm. waking up like, what the hell? Exactly. Punching my husband like, the fuck are you doing? He's like, what? What? I was asleep. <laughs> he was like, I wasn't even facing you. <laughs> like, are you anyway. sure? Mm -hmm. But this is uh, definitely a weird thing because it's the first time it's ever run away from me. I'm like, where? why did you do that? <laughs> anyway. So. um. Yeah, back to this interview. Um, and I know the story. <laughs> I know the story of cocktails and crimes mm. creation, but I know that listeners and viewers do not know. So, um, tell us what what inspired cocktails and crimes. Um, there's a couple of different cases, um, but the first one would obviously be one that. At, well, there's two that we'll we'll feature in the future on the show. Um, one of them is super personal to me, and it's a personal friend of mine that's been missing for a very long time. Um, and he's, you know, we we have no answers. There's no closure. The family, friends. Um, so I've always been huge and like I've always loved like true crime documentaries or true crime shows, and then when it actually happens to someone that you know or that you're close to, it really, it changes your perspective on like when you watch it on TV, it's just, it's just a show. It's not a real person. It's not a real thing. It's just a story. Um, and then of course I've been a bartender for, you know, a really long time. I'm, I'm pushing almost 20 years in the bar business. And so um, I hear a lot of things in that industry um you know i've i've listened to people who have had family members that are murdered i have da's and judges who have sat at my bar and been like could you fucking believe this you guys this so totally it's true, just she, wild she's called me and told me about these judges and stuff at her her bar i'm like what so, yeah we get some crazy. wild you know it's just it's a lot of wild things that you hear but um so when I first got into true crime, the very first thing that I actually remember watching on TV was the Jean Benet Ramsey case as a kid. Um, I, I remember that so vividly. And I remember my papa and everybody sitting in front of the TV and this little girl, you know, being flashed on the screen and the confusion and everything behind it. But then the next thing that I remember was a case that I obviously have been so passionate about and such an advocate about this case is the West Memphis three out of West Memphis, Arkansas. Well, we're going to, we're going to talk about that pretty um, in depth a little while. Oh yeah. In the show, yeah. So I've actually done that on the podcast unexplained realms. Um, we did a two part episode on that. The first was just me telling the story. Um, I had producer and director on the show. And then we did like a round table kind of just open discussion about it for the second part, which was yeah. and obvious. It was needed, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's such a multi-part thing. Um, mm -hmm. But when it, when I decided that I wanted to do something like this and I wanted to really dive into it, it was uh, after, like I said, a very close friend of mine went missing and um i mean uh, us that know him that know the whole story and i don't want to give too much away because we are going to feature it on the mm -hmm. show but um we pretty much know what happened right. so to speak like we we mm -hmm. want the closure we want to bring him home we want the justice and the answers that we've never gotten and so i was sitting around during um 
the scam demic and was like, you know what? I, TikTok was getting big. Uh, mm. I'm not a social media person at all. And so I was like, man, I'd really love to do this. But um, yeah, I'm not a social media person. And I was like, dude, a podcast would be so awesome because it's not really social media. I don't have to do it every day. Um, little did I know that this literally would be like a consumption of an everyday job. It's it's the same here at Unexplained Realms. So we the website was born in 2011. And obviously, like a lot of people know, maybe they don't. I'm a writer. I'm a published writer, horror writer, poet, whatever. And um, I would just write the stories. I would submit them to magazines. I still write for multiple magazines. So fun stuff. And then again, during the pandemic, I was literally stuck up in my place like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I can only write so much. And the producer who was, you know, a good friend of mine, he was like, we should just do the podcast on Explain Realms. Like, what? What do you mean? And he's like, we could just do it. Just do it. And it was literally bored in 2020. And we're four years later still getting going strong. So, well, the idea originally yeah. was that I wanted to dive in and I was going to create a TikTok. You know, Bailey Sarian was a huge influence for me. Mm -hmm. I love Bailey Sarian. Mm -hmm. And I used to listen to her, or I still do, Murder Makeup Mondays. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, man, it would be really cool because I'm a bartender and I have a bar in my house. I could set my phone up and I could like mm -hmm. record, you know, making cocktails and telling somebody about a, a, a crime. But at the time, TikTok, I think you could only have like a 30 second or one minute long video. Right. And I was like, man, I would have to retell the story and like stop and cut. And, yeah, and so I never did. It. And right. then the podcast thing became the idea. And I was like, you know what? That is what I wanted. We do. won't talk about where that I came from. <laughs> no, that's a lot but, of different. But, but I so basically, you know, um, I think you and I met through the the real true reasons that the the podcast was created. But um, yeah. So now I do the social media for her. <laughs> yeah, she, she doesn't have to. I hate. It's not that I I hate okay. it. I'm I I'm not good at it. I'm not. It's just um, so that your your strong point for that show is and always has been is just finding those cases. And you guys, I mean, sometimes because we share so social media like accounts so I can go in and she can go in and we can do whatever. And I'll see messages like Facebook messages from people that are reaching out like, Nikki, can you do my case? Blah, blah, blah. She's like so dynamic and personable that people are coming to her with their crimes. Yeah. I, yeah crimes. Well, you know, so, yeah, it's, we it's have the cool. one. So I had a friend that messaged me and was like, I have four. And mm. I said, Oh my God, like seriously. That's and she crazy, said, yeah, yeah, I have four things that you need to look into. They're wild. And I said, okay. And so what we've, we've discussed, you know, we've talked to the mom of one, uh, mm. the sister of one, you know, we've done a group message with them. Um, and I'm still actively looking in. So, and then another friend of mine who worked in the bar business as well, you know, her dad was murdered. We want to feature, we're doing his case. We're still getting that show prepared. Um, mm -hmm. So like, unfortunately, I tell everybody, you can bring cases to me, but I swear Mississippi cases will keep me busy for the next oh my God, 30 yeah. years. A lot of the problem is that it, there's just so much research if you want to be responsible about it. You don't want yes. to give misinformation. You want to give true information, you know. And so. if you saw, like if I turned my, my camera, like if you could see where I'm at, like in my studio here. But if you could mm -hmm. see the wall that I have of stacks of, of papers, reports. You know, mm -hmm. going through and like I file, you know, uh, FOIAs all the time. Um, I constantly am in contact with like the detectives or uh, medical examiners or forensic pathologists. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm. I, it's not when I do these, I know that there's a lot of people and I'm not hating on anybody. I'm not knocking anybody's crime, you know, shows or whatever. But a lot of these that I watch or that I used to listen to that I've learned now. Um, I'm not as big of a fan as I used to be because I noticed that a lot of them don't do the research that goes in. They read Google 
or they right. read one and website. And you know that the internet isn't always accurate for information, you know, like yeah. when, when I do my research for just even urban legends and whatnot, you know, you visit four different websites and they all have different information. So um, nothing's truly accurate on the internet. So that's why you have to file those, you know, record requests and whatnot to really understand. And like, exactly. And so it's crazy. So I work as, you know, I, I've been a bartender for a long time. Um, I'm, very well educated and very articulate. Um, so I pride myself on the fact that I'm very intelligent. So people that think that you just, you're, I'm dumb and I'm a bartender, you're very mm. wrong. I chose to be a bartender because I like the money. Well, in this <laughs> world, we all need some kind of side hustle because you already know economics is just a tough thing so, right now. So, but like I tell people, I'm a bartender because I can work on a Thursday night and I can knock out anywhere from a thousand to 2,500 in, in mm -hmm. one night and I'm golden. And so I don't want to be just, a bartender. I want to be a drinker. I want to be at your bar drinking. <laughs> I mean, I can accommodate work. that. <laughs> I know you would. I don't want to work. what's crazy is being the fact that I'm a bartender and I've been in this business and I do have some of the coolest people that come in, especially when I work like this weird afternoon kind of swing shift, as I call it. Like, mm. so I go in during the day and I'll work like this weird, I'll get there like two and I'll stay till like, seven right mm -hmm. made like 500 bucks just talking to uh legislators senators politicians all kinds of stuff they come in you know our lobbyists and stuff but i also have a lot of like our public service commissioner and it's really funny because i had one of our commissioners come in the other day or about a month ago and he was like hey and he just slid me the contract he's been coming in on a regular basis and he's i tell him he tries to poach me but he came in he said I really want you to take this job and I I, just, I really I I need you to take this job and I was like I don't want it I don't want to work for the state I don't want to make I'm not going to leave where I'm at and make the money that you're offering me to it's just not it's, I make more than this working one night a week and right. he was like no I really want you to take it and it's a death investigator position for the state I would be their lead death investigator wow um That's and cool. it's really cool and I like would love it if the state would pay, <laughs> but they don't. So I'll just do a podcast on it. I'll just right. talk about crimes that they don't solve. And you know, it's like these days, I swear, it's so many cases actually get solved as a result of podcasts and the, the reach, you know, I mean, it depends on what story day or week it is for my show you know people yeah. are interested in different things but there is a large reach i mean you could see the listenership and you know we see the stats over on cocktails and crime too and so just imagine someone knows something in these crimes and if they hear us talking about it it may jog their memory so yeah beneficial. Um, uh, you know just like with unexplained you have a lot of shows that you've done that do link back to some form of true crime where you do mm -hmm. focus more on urban legends but you have a lot of urban legends that are based or focused on raw everything. like we, we have urban legends category we have you know monsters um paranormal um true crime not too too much true crime but a little bit um like we even have a category of the internet, which I'm working on. The next episode will be about creepy pasta and the story of Laughing Jack. So that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, you know, we kind of just it depends for me. But you know, on cocktails and crime, it's just straight up crime. So oh yeah, all knows day every day knows what to expect there. Yeah. So but we have a reach. So I think all podcasts in some form have a reach you know i think so and i think that it's really important so we mm. focus on um you know the smaller cases that don't get the attention mm. that's why we've been asked about certain cases and and not that we wouldn't love to talk about them obviously but i really want to give this small person that didn't get the same acknowledgement that john benet ramsey got or the same acknowledgement that Agreed. jessica chambers got i want to give these people, their their cases are just as important. They mm -hmm. still have loved ones and family that want answers as well. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit more brash, you know. I'm a little bit more um mm. yes. ruthless. I know. I'll call you out by name. I don't really care. You guys um, go back to the Summer Wells case, and there's a couple parts there. <laughs> She's not nice. 
fucking trash bag. I actually mm-hmm. was kind of guest hosting at the time, and I was like, "Whoa, what the hell, like, girl? You do? Are you what?" She's like, "Just, it's fine, <laughs> okay." I this is my show. I yeah. do what I want. I was just a little me. like taken back because I wasn't expecting it. And I was like, "Did you yeah. just?" that lady out like oh I did okay you did but All you right, know what back. though i would rather be a hundred percent and bring you the realest um unfiltered raw and a mm-hmm. lot of the stuff that we talk about and that we bring up i mean you and i will be talking and and elaine and all of us will be talking elaine is our other host um mm-hmm. but we'll be discussing and just be like what the fuck like, and you'll have to take a breather from this and be like, this is the most insane shit I've ever read. And just when you right. think the case becomes the most insane, we find something in another case that tops that by 20. Uh-huh. Uh, you guys, though, uh, anybody watching, I'm going to have to pull out some of our blooper reels and post them. Um, <laughs> in the early days, we would record from literally anywhere. Like Nikki would be camping or whatever. And uh, some of the stuff that, I mean, <laughs> it, it's worth a laugh. So remember oh, our early absolutely. days. Wait, wait, think- wait, which case was it that you were recording from the toy hauler? I think that was the was it Chandra May that I did from I think so yeah where I was like having to like hold my computer and I she was, was just, literally in the back of the toy hauler yeah there was that there was one we did there there was one I did in the camper in my bedroom was like trying to get the lighting it was horrible but the case was I mean the story was still right there, was still but good, yeah but no the We've bloopers were hilarious <laughs> yeah I have to pull those out um if I can get the tiktok going we'll talk about that later um then we will um post some of those blooper reels because it's pretty hilarious some of the stuff crashing falling things falling down cussing yelling <laughs> like we wait were, are we recording still <laughs> we are oh God, it was, it was <laughs> yeah it was rough <laughs> but you know what, though? I think that that kind of makes it to where if you watch or you listen to some of these bigger podcasts and they have such a production and it's always so perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm a real person. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm real. And I have horrible, uh, number one, horrible anxiety about being on camera to begin with. Yeah. Um, number we were two. We both rested into that in the early oh. days with i unsaid wanted audio network. we'll I just wanted say audio. With un, we'll just say with unsaid network yes with <laughs> just, it's like folder yeah. more yeah it was not to be named i don't know i think that um it worked out but we both weren't ready for the whole camera thing but um so i I have just wanted you on the show for so long and I wanted to introduce you to all of my unexplained realms fans fans. So I get a lot of mail about do more true crime. Yeah, we're unexplained realms. We do a little bit of it. Not a lot. We do a little bit of everything. Yeah. I'm super happy to be here. Yeah. Um, and we've but, been talking about this collab for a yeah. while. I want to suggest to my viewers, listeners, go over to cocktails and crimes. If you want straight crime, because oh, yeah. that's where it's at. And there's but nothing off limits. Said, Nikki, one of my best friends, obviously, we do two different shows. We talk almost, well, probably like every day once, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, she gives me a lot of my inspiration for some of my shows. So, um, for example, The Witch of Yazoo, she is Mississippi, where she lives. So that one directly comes from Mississippi. And yes. it is a fun tale of... Of a witch, and didn't you say that you knew or relatives of that said witch or something like that, or you knew some? Something um, was I have uh, one of the girls that I went to high school with uh, was related to the woman who is supposedly or was the the witch of Yazoo, and you have to understand. So from where I live to the grave where she's buried mm-hmm. is only a about a 45 minute drive growing up as a kid we went to yazoo all the time my papa was huge into metal detecting and yazoo has some of the most amazing places that to look. is a cute little town too in my it's research precious. it's adorable really and yeah. it's really insane i remember growing up as a kid and mm. 
go into Yazoo. There used to be um, an old diner and had like the soda machine. It was like an old soda shop. And mm-hmm. we used to go all the time when my papa would metal detect. And I remember if you were a bad kid, like if you were in the diner and you were acting up and you were doing something you weren't supposed to, they'd be like, don't do that. The witch of Yazoo will get you, you know, mm-hmm. and hey, it kept us in line. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But it is a story that to anyone that's from here that knows it, um, we and all still believe the, it. The author, Willie Morris, I mean, yeah. he took the, because he grew up there, um, he took the story of the Witch of Yazoo and he wrote a whole book on it, um, highlighting his childhood, you know, riding bikes through the little town and just different stuff. And um, that is all time a great a great read. You guys oh, go absolutely. get that. Go get it. Um over on unexplainedrealms.com website, we are partners of Amazon. So I actually have the Witch of Yazoo story up and you can I think click on the links to get that book through us. So but um yeah he he talked about in that book how the townspeople kind of tricked him because they were the pranksters of the town. Oh yeah. Good good story. But um yeah there was a lot of um just lots in that, lots of, um, I don't know, pieces of that urban legend to unpack. So, oh, there's a lot. And if you, mm-hmm. so if anybody ever travels and they, they end up and that's kind of something they want to do, there is an old lady in town who still dresses up. She's mm-hmm. she has full costume, full character. She plays the Witch of Yazoo and she takes you on the tour of where the, you know, where she's buried she takes you on the tour of where the fire started. She takes you on the tour of of where the witch supposedly lived. I mean, it's, she takes you and right, shows right. you all these things. She tells you the story, and it's very um, it is very theatrical. But mm. um, she's been playing the witch of Yazoo now for I know forty years. Yeah, I think that's what I read. It was it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, but um, she's actually like we kind of she's kind of famous. Like she goes, mm-hmm. um, when she makes appearances, people are like, oh my God, it's the Witch of Yazoo. You know, right. we all she's really not, she. but yeah. No, it's but. that's such a cute town, quaint area. Um, great story. Um, author Willie, Willie Morris is from there and wrote that whole book. And so that came from Nikki, that inspiration. Yeah. So <laughs> we trade a lot of stories back and forth. But And um, I think, did you do the one on the Natchez Trace? Not uh, yet. Still working on that, that one. one? Okay. Oh my um, god! I have so many things that I'm constantly. I I'm telling you, <laughs> we have some wild ones. Mm-hmm. I think you actually on unexplained. I think maybe on one of your first seasons, you did a case that's like the. It's a funny crime. Which one? It, it's a uh, the Phantom Barber of like Pascagoula. I think so. Yeah. Uh, like like you break in and cut people's hair. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, um, but it was a funny crime. That's Muslim a true crime. crime. <laughs> yeah, but he um, didn't harm anyone. He just cut their their hair. I know it was a little strange, but <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I get it. Uh, we did that one, and then um, you know we did a lot of weird stuff earlier on. I'm kind of pulling it together a little more these days, and I don't know. Um, but. The real reason I brought her on, you guys, no, is I I kind of definitely wanted her expert opinion on some of our actual true crime shows that I have done. I mean, I do you the research tell. as much as I can. However, I I don't always go into detail as much as you do. So, whereas what we do on true cocktails and crime, so. The first one I want to talk about is the exorcism of Arely Proctor. Um, And I know it's funny is you haven't heard this one before. No. I told you. So this one's based out of San Jose, California. It is literally a hop, skip, and a jump from where I am. Uh, Very, 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 very close. Okay, so... Um, the family, she's the mom, the grandfather, I guess they ran like a church out of their home. I, I don't understand that, but okay. Okay. yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to find this. So, um, 
to the mom's name, I believe was Claudia. Um, she stated that on September 23rd, 2021, her daughter woke up screaming and she had no idea what was wrong with her. Um, so she called her brother. His name was Renee. And he came over to assist in praying, praying for the child. Maybe call a fucking praying. doctor. Well, maybe there's, who knows, you know? So they believed the child who was five at the time. Or no, wait, no, I'm sorry, three. She was three years old that she was possessed by demons. By oh, demons, Satan. did she crawl know. backwards up the wall? No, she her head crying. around. Bit pieces. No. So the brother and sister prayed over this child. I guess their house was in Mountain View. Again, another little side town not far from this area, um, San Jose area. Um, so the praying didn't help, and they prayed all night long. And the next day, September 24th, around 6 a.m., they decided to drive her to their their like little home church, whatever, their makeshift church they had. Um, they believe she because she was totally possessed. They said, and they were going to perform an exorcism. So once she was at the church, her mother, the little girl's mother, Claudia, began sticking her fingers in her child's throat to make her vomit, and then began squeezing her throat. Um, she is she believed this was going to expel the demon faster. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> Then her, the father, which would be the grandfather of the child, <clears throat> excuse me, it, he shows up and they, they're just doing this whole exorcism. Um, they held her down by her abdomen, her neck and her legs. And of course she's three and she's fighting back. Basically she, she dies. Okay. That's, you know, you guys go listen to that podcast episode. It's on here. Um, but basically she dies. Okay. They're arrested. And I think arraigned. I don't Fucking know. Hope so. They're released or whatnot. But I'm going to show you a video of the mother not long after this child is dead. You know, um, I, I, I'm just going to play it and you, you can decide after that because you're the true crime expert here. Let's see. How do I, how do I do this? <laughs> Um, there we go. Oh. Here we go. I have no words. Can you let me know if you can see it on the screen? Not yet. Oh, wait, not yet. There we go. All right, here we go. Oh, see, I, <laughs> I'm too used to um, Snapchat and Instagram. But Your child <laughs> just died, just so you know. Um, welcome to my channel. Okay, welcome to my channel. Um, this video, it's, I'm just going to talk about what I want to do. You know, I, I, I want to, um, what I want to do on this channel. Okay. And what I wanted to consist of, um, and I like the main thing that I want is I want it to be real. You know, I want it to be raw right and that's why i don't want to edit nothing of the video you know i want you guys to see the real being real is okay you know being yourself is okay and i want to teach um the people that actually need it and i know like my videos are going to reach to those who need it you know because what i'm going to say is it's real you know it's 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 um it's going to be raw it's going to be like like, it's going to be real, <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying like, because people could take it differently, you know, because I, I know that people say like, oh, I'm real. I'm going to skip blah, forward a little bit, like, okay. They don't mean it like in a humble way. We talk about much. the fact that her vernacular is absolutely I, I could talk about trash. so much. I could talk about so much, okay, because my brain works like that. I'm skipping and forward. I know I never said this on here, but like on my social media, I, 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 I say that, you know, it's so much. It's going to take her 20 minutes to get out a sentence. For, yeah, you know, I know. Just, you know no, yeah. they're um, Oop, I, oop, we got a invisible. YouTube commercial with nothing to hide. Yeah. Yeah. Hidden YouTube. <laughs> Hang on, we'll, we'll go okay. back to that. I, I just want to so point one out that now that's really, like, yeah. get unlimited 5G data power. 
Yeah, she's okay. Like I'm trying to skip forward a little bit because I may not know certain things in life, and I want my videos to to be for them. You know, I understand that not everybody's gonna like my videos, and not everybody that not everybody's gonna like me, and that's fine. You know, I have a strong accent, and that's okay. You know, as long as you can understand, this happens to me a lot, but it's okay. You know, it's okay. This is what I want you guys to see. I want you guys to see who I am. You know. And like I say, like I said, like I want it to be real. You know, I don't want to be like pretending something that I'm not like, no, this is who I am. You know, this is who I am. And that's okay. And those. I've had enough. I can't do it anymore. I can't. Like, I. I'm trying to fix us here. Oh. I, I, I literally want to go I through the computer and that, poke her and be like, that audio spit it out. And, yeah, I played that audio and a few other of her audio clips from YouTube in the show. Um, but that uh, that particular video was recorded just days after her daughter died. Looks like and a grieving mother to me. It was, it was just, it was shocking because you literally murdered your child and... I think uh, it was in 2021, so courts were still pretty impacted from, you know, our pandemic thing. And I, I just, I think they didn't prosecute right away. But nevertheless, she took to YouTube to, I, I don't real. know, I'm going to be famous or be real or whatever, after murdering her child. So um, what are what are your thoughts as far as, like, exorcism and being a crime and you're you're the you're the crime lady so um, so i have number one out of all of that number one um if you believe in in ghost and hauntings and things of that or the paranormal in general mm -hmm. then you do have to believe that certain things such as possession and and poltergeist and you kind of have to believe in all of it at some yeah. point right mm -hmm. right so i'm i'm going to go starting with saying that into I am so completely anti-religion all right because I believe if you look at statistics of our history number one religion has killed more fucking people than anything in the world okay I'm, now, I'm gonna stop you real quick so you can rage away if you want, but I will tell you, when I talk about religion, my fans come for me. So <laughs> I won't be speaking too much on that. But time. you go for it. You know how I what I believe is, you know, you know. So you get fucking speak. time. Yeah. So. Um, and I have like here's the thing though. I will say this. I will firmly stand on this, and I don't uh, you're not gonna change my stance, you're not gonna change my opinion. Mm -hmm. Religion is one of the biggest money-making scams in the world. And mm -hmm. with that being said, uh, falling towards how I feel about organized religion as a whole, I also firmly believe that the only people quote unquote qualified to perform an exorcism is nobody. Okay. Um, absolutely. I, just... I would say maybe the Warrens. Okay. So Ed Warren yeah. If I had been possessed and I, he was still alive, I'd be like, hey, call Ed Warren. Don't call, yeah, fucking call them. Yeah, call them because I think they're the ones. But, uh, I, but don't I think this home exorcism, uh, whatever they had going no. on, is an absolute excuse to do some really shitty things to people. I think that it's a brainwashing tactic. And I think that this family, this mother, is a mm -hmm. brainwashed human being who's probably been raised by a bunch of people that are invested in what could be considered a cult yeah. of its own it's, sort it's funny about that particular episode that i did um she was mexican obviously you could hear the accent i am almost 100 mexican myself and i believe she's a probably a lot Catholic. of people a lot of people called me names and you know for shaming her and okay at this show i don't shame anyone i'm just telling you the no. story storytelling that's it but um being raised Catholic myself, I am no longer a practicing Catholic, nor do I follow organized religion. But being raised with it and understanding the fundamentals behind it, um, I don't believe that's what we were supposed to be doing. No. I, mean, I don't, I don't I think know. that the, 
his religion you know. is a blanket and they killed a child and she's a mm-hmm. guilty she's guilty i don't give a fuck if she's black white green pink purple polka dotted mexican or whatever right, right. but i, I know that that's right fuck. it's you know when you're when you when you produce things that you put out into the world everyone that can listen anybody that has an opinion can jump in and say whatever and um i do get poked at a lot with fan mail regarding my race um my um opinions and lack thereof religious content so um i just try to be cautious i really i I really don't tell you what just yeah. because of that, I want him to come over to Cocktails and Crime. I'm going to do some religious content for him. Yeah. I have a ton of cases I'm sitting on. Let's you guys heard that. You guys want to fight? Go on over there to Nikki because I'm I got time. All peace and love and light over here. I don't. I don't really want to fight with anybody. But um, yeah, I'm not no, going to fight with you. I'm going to speak facts <laughs> and proof, and then you're going to get your feelings hurt. Not yeah, to mention, um, I I was raised. You know, you were raised in a, in a Catholic. Listen, I was raised in a legit fucking cult. This is wow, not a joke. Yeah. I legit was raised in a fucking cult. My grandmother is a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, jeez. That's a fucking cult. Okay. I'm we so are one cult. step away from I'm Warren like, Jeff's I... multiple wives. <laughs> now, now where where people can see my opinion and my true true beliefs and my my colors here is in my writing. If you if you can possibly find the magazines I write for, you will see some very opinionated articles. But I'm not going to speak those right now, <laughs> so I'm just going to stay in the realms of the unexplained over here. <laughs> so, yeah, I. But as far as the case itself being the way that regardless of how you view religion or what your belief and your stances are facts are facts that's not a grieving mother that's not someone that believes they did anything wrong that's someone mm-hmm. that murdered their child based on their it's it goes back to the you, you learn what you live okay so like in this sense that woman is guilty as the day is long she has no there's no like she has child. no remorse and it yeah like there's no like talking about her her loss this great loss mm-hmm. and that is a club that someone never wants to be a part of is the lost child club you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that woman does well, not those of us to that be love our those, children so yeah exactly she doesn't seem that way i mm-hmm. think that the woman is guilty as the day is long and i'm not so sure that this child was actually screaming i think maybe she just decided she didn't want to be a mom and well to casey anthony i, I don't want to get too much but i do believe that might have been the case because in in the in the episode on unexplained realms you're gonna hear us talk about how she was throwing up something purple and um they thought oh god that means she's possessed it's purple coming out Sounds like you it gave green, her but, something right and so what i'm thinking is you try to knock her out it didn't work it made her stomach upset she's crying because her stomach hurts she's three so they can't verbalize very well i have a very special little three-year-old in my life won't get too much into that but you know um she verbalizes but if it were something very detailed like that she may not be able to tell us we just need to be exactly on it and know like okay something's wrong to go through the checklist what's going on you know listen when my child was three if he woke up screaming bloody murder and it wasn't a nightmare Mm -hmm. first thing i'm gonna do is figure out where you have a fever do you have and then somewhere right i'm not calling my pretend pastor priest or whatever was her dad or her brother she called her brother and they called the dad who was the preacher or priest or whatever the hell he was so this was a whole family whole run church type thing oh yeah the three of them were arrested both all three of them were they so, convicted uh, of anything uh let me see in the story like was there actually uh, a conviction yes they were convicted okay. let me find this it's in the in the show but uh all involved 25 years to life good yeah so i just uh, i would call a doctor that that would have been what i did as a parent mm -hmm, you would think my child's screaming he's upset and he's not you know he's not from a nightmare or whatever i'm calling the doctor here here they are you know they all look slow as hell (laughs) right but yeah they all no, look they all oh, look like they all have fucking two brain cells fighting for third place so i'm not 
<laughs> you guys see this. This is what we love about cocktails and crimes. She just tells you how it is. <laughs> right. Come for me. I got time. <laughs> um, I'm going to start hiring you to fight my unexplained realms battles because I like literally sometimes read these emails and go cry in my bed. My husband's like, fuck that. Go scream it. I'm like, I can't. I can't. I can't. Here's the thing. I I've gotten you know I've gotten some hate and that's okay. I don't care. You're allowed to have your love. opinion. I get more love fan mail than I do hate. But it's just even if I get like thirty emails, they're like, oh my god, we love you, blah blah blah, and then one hate mail. It, I, that that's it. I'm like on the bed, hysterical. I think the reason that I'm so thick skinned and it doesn't bother me or mm. affect me is a because realistically the internet has made so many soft ass humans um here's the deal i am still the i will go punch you in the fucking mouth okay mm -hmm. where everybody wants to sit behind a keyboard and they're so used to sitting behind a keyboard talking trash and not getting punched in the mouth right so like unless you're gonna fly into jackson international airport and come find me Shut the fuck up. Right. Like, I'm not studying you. Like, you're hired. Me. Hired. You are my personal security, you know? <laughs> Works for me. Um, yeah, no, I, I just, you know, it is what it is. But so that case I thought would be fun to chat with you about. That's, because... That is wild. I've never even heard of this. And I'm so mm -hmm. like mind blown. I, you know, I would like to say it shocks me when a parent does something like this but some of the cases we looked at and like people are humans can be terrible. just pieces of shit and terrible I mean, people i could be wrong because i live in this area but like like san jose in itself is just um it's terrifying like there's a lot of people and a lot of craziness and a lot of just it's just mind-blowing you know look um, i will say this in the area that you're in um, my husband and I just watched a documentary. I the messaged Vallejo. him about I, it. I worked in Vallejo for many years. And, and I um, was yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say this. The true crimer that I am. When I first watched it. And I you know, started the, se you know, the series where I was like three parts. When I first started it. I was like, okay, look. Yeah. He, I didn't think that he was guilty based on a list of reasons. My husband mm -hmm. was like, he did it. He killed her. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think so. And so then right. getting yeah. into the next portion, the first thing when she, when they're getting ready to talk to her, I'm not going to lie. First thing that went through my mind, same thing in the documentary, Gone Girl. I loved the book. I loved the movie. Mm -hmm. I said, this bitch, oh my God. But then I honestly didn't really put a lot of merit in anything that she said until further in when they're like, we found this guy and yada. And I was like, we found the okay. evidence. And now, the and, story uh, was so just so wild. Just, but the way that the areas, police handled it were horrible. Mm, there's areas in there, like I think the Dublin PD. Um, those that's basically at this moment, those are our stomping grounds. My husband works in that area. Um, I I'm all over the place mm -hmm. there. It's just stomping grounds. But basically, that particular town, Vallejo, um, we watched it because we'd worked there for so many years and um i mean we were throwing shit at the tv like screw you because the police department there and oh, god i hope nobody comes for me but um it, it's I've, worthless I've, it's worthless i have I've stories of, i have stories of working there i could tell you for days stories where i worked there and my life was in danger and i called 911 and they said what do you want us to do there's 36 callers ahead of you all right i told one dispatcher then i'm gonna fight tooth or nail you know to Is kill that's and she said to me if you oh, okay. kill someone during this then you'll go to jail i'm like this is ridiculous Listen, so my life's in I danger make if i fight back and kill them i go to jail i'm gonna make this Figure that abundantly out. clear to everyone <laughs> okay number one she may live in California. I fucking don't. Okay. I live in the South. All right. 
we make that clear. And everybody down here where I live, please, for the love of God, do not try anything unless you want to get put on an ugly t-shirt, okay? Because right. we will put you on a fucking t-shirt and send you to your mama in a box. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. All right. They're we are like the wild, the wild South. fucking West when it oh, comes yeah, very, to Oh, yeah, very, very different. Like, the, we um, had that discussion. You and I talked about the difference mm, in the laws. Just absolutely. like from here. So, in the state of Mississippi, we are under the castle law. Mm -hmm. So, if you're breaking into my house and I fucking shoot you, a little bit they're like they're going to give Florida's, me a key to the fucking city. Yeah, a little bit like Florida's stand your ground. Um, I don't Where castle are. law is the stand your ground law. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept. So, basically, um, they're you can and can't hear it's it's uh all these circumstances and all these other things that come into play you they're know they're gonna give me really a key to the fucking and, city and be so, like thank you ma'am yeah mm -hmm. you yeah, know um, we actually had an officer involved this happened the other like two or three days ago uh it's being investigated obviously by mbi so um i know the officer involved can't really go into detail. I can't tell mm. what the department is because I'm not supposed to know what I know. But um, an officer involved shooting at the police department because they were booking someone in that they had arrested for beating the fuck out of their wife. Um, mm. And he went for the officer's gun in booking. Mm. Lovely. And Yum got pew pewed. Yeah. And now the family is like, they shot my baby. Yo, baby was a piece of shit. Yeah. Yo, baby got what he deserved. Mm. And, you know, it came down to, uh, it is all on body cam and, you know, it is what it is. But here, when people commit crimes here, it's a different level. Like, out oh, there, yes. people commit these crimes because they know that there's really no just, there's no repercussions right. for the criminal. And, and it's always the victim that gets in trouble. Right. And and look at look at that documentary. I can't remember the name of it. I just know that American Nightmare. Yeah. Uh Netflix, guys. Remember, if you don't have Netflix, go on over to unexplainedrealms.com. There's links there. We are partnered up with them as well. Discounts. Anyway, um, that that documentary, i is the <laughs> ultimate victim shaming, blaming ultimate show of the difference and discrepancy right but that one i already knew it. the case so i avoided watching the documentary for quite a while it was rainy one day and my husband's like let's just do it i'm like are you sure because we both know how we feel about that location that yeah. area the police force there and we did and of course it pissed us off like really really bad and the poor the poor couple I, i'm very happy for them they that tragedy brought them so much closer honestly and i was and surprised i i would i because i already knew i i was waiting for that happy ending because i knew it was going to come out like that i knew the case but but you knew um, it you know yeah, that was, was here, when so. i watched it i was just like oh mm. but i want to give a shout out to the attorney that aaron quinn the guy his attorney was the highlight of that documentary for mm -hmm. me. I yeah. literally would sit down and have drinks with that attorney. <laughs> right. Because he was fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, he was. And like, I want to make it clear. Obviously, over here, I mean, we really do. We back the blue. I, I support our <laughs> our law, our local law enforcement right, yeah. is amazing. And I'm I support them hard. I support all law enforcement. Mm. Um, unless you're a shitty one. And there are shitty people in every job in the world. So come for me yeah. if you want to. I have a lot of friends who are cops. I don't really care what your opinion of the police department is. Um, so like, and doing true crime, I talk to a lot. I have um, one case that I really want to do and I really want to feature, but I've been working on it. I have been so, I'm probably, I probably have over a hundred hours invested yeah. in, in talking to just, the people involved mm. and getting statements and things like that, preparing to do a show on it before I throw it out there and say, it's what we're doing. And one of the officers involved absolutely was like, I was so disgusted by the way that it was handled at the department that it caused him to leave the department that he worked at and go to another one. 
And then wow. later on, um, well, actually right now, he's trying to leave from a city department and go to our MBI, to our federal department. And he said the first thing he's going to do if he does go and, and get into MBI is obviously take this case and be like, why the fuck is this so hard to solve? Mm. And so like it did, it really affected him to the point that he, you know, gave up an entire, he was vested in this department, had been there for like 10, 11 years and it drove him to leave and go somewhere else. So yeah. And like, I talked to him a lot, uh, you know, and I watched a documentary and I'm like, you're never going to believe this. And that documentary was one that I was like, you need to watch this. This is wild. Yep. So let's move on. We're, we're kind of digressing. We here. I know. <laughs> um, we talked at the, the top of the show here that a um, little bit about the West Memphis three. And again, I mean, I've been doing my show for about four years, so we don't do a lot of true crime, but once in a while, and we picked up, the west memphis three and if you don't know that case as a true crime fan or you know like a just an unexplained kind of people fan you're out of your mind go look it up (laughs) everybody knows that case um yeah i know that i did like a two-part on it like i said earlier in the show had director producers different people on the show it needed that depth it it couldn't just be me telling just the story so um, no because there's a lot to unpack mm -hmm, we kind of like a round table session i think in the second second episode second part um but i know that maybe i did it justice in my own way but i didn't do it in the fashion of a true crime show no but what i think that you did do is i think that that was the very first unexplained episode i ever listened to Mm -hmm. and i will say i think that you did great because you told the story it's i did we tried well i i do again i do all my own writing um i tried to just stick to a timeline find the timeline and find the facts and go from there um but I'm excited because you've decided that we are going to do that over on Cocktails and Crime. Yeah. And I definitely can see this going into like one of the multiple parts like we did with Christian Andriaco and uh, Summer Wells and oh, absolutely. really being able to just dissect it. I mean, I, I'd like to, I, it's going to be fun. You guys go check out Cocktails and Crime and look forward to that. Cause I oh, yeah. And, and what? So what I have to say is I pride myself on, I filed um, the Freedom of Information Act with West Memphis Police Department and not to give away some of the smoking things, but um, Mm. when I filed it and I received, and I am saving these because Mm. I am going to blast West Memphis PD. um, Mm. And and let me explain the reason that that case was so, I guess, pivotal in, in growing up. I remember it, obviously. But not only that, my brother, my baby brother, is buried in Blyville, Arkansas, which is only literally minutes away from West Memphis. Um, and I can take you. I've literally walked this area. I've stood in these places. I know exactly where the bodies were found. I've. It's a to see these small town people be so abused by mm-hmm. and their kids. They were there were children that were abused. You took advantage. Anybody that knows anything about the case, um, and there are people out there that still scream up and down that these three boys are guilty. There is so much that says that they're not. Do you do you remember the first time you and I discussed this case? Oh yeah, we were I'm like, passionate. I was like, wait, I have opinions on those boys too, and you're like, what? <laughs> and a little bit, of, little bit of exchange. I know. Um, I don't know. I sit on the fence because it's with it being unexplained. Um, I don't know. Um, well, I, really I will know. tell you that I believe I got heart. an update, mm-hmm. and you know, the, one of the biggest arguments or statements or whatever was that the state of Arkansas was blocking. Uh, the testing for the DNA 
Mm-hmm. And um, so it has now gone federal and that has been overturned. They're going to be given the opportunity to test this DNA if the state will actually produce the evidence that's supposed to have still been in in this, you know, storage or whatever. There's a lot going on with that. Um, but the update is, is the state will now have to test the DNA, which if you're guilty, this has always been my stance. These three boys have said test it. It's not, it wasn't mm. us. However, um, if you're guilty and you think there is some chance that your DNA would be there, you would not right, right. be pushing no, totally and ha- have spent millions of dollars. The same thing what we, we did over on the Billy Scott story. It was the same kind of situation. Yeah. I mean, no, no murderer, killer, whatever is going to scream, test my DNA because I mean, they, maybe they, they, maybe they didn't leave any behind, but in these cases, they're very old. They're, they're not recent. And I don't think people were very cautious at that time because no one really knew about DNA back then. You know, DNA I will say, um, for the time with the West Memphis three and all the years and all the things that have come to light in this that, and third, um, number one, I would suggest that anybody that doesn't or has never watched it, Go watch Paradise Lost. Uh, that's really the first true crime documentary I think that was ever actually made of its kind. Um, but go watch those three. There's three parts of it. Um, and, and that one, you guys just pay attention there. to trigger so warning. many. Oh yeah, hard trigger uh, warnings on it. I, I, I when I was doing the research for the show, I. I had to turn it off multiple times, come back to it a couple different times. I think when, you know, the bodies are found and in the manner in which they are found. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Once I saw some of the case files and the original pictures, I, I vomited a couple times. I have them. Yeah, I know. I have all of it. <laughs> I, I was able to obtain them during my research and I, uh, I it's just. It's horrid. Yeah, it's horrible. Um. I feel like whoever did it put the bodies in that fashion to frame the three boys. I do too. And I, I know who did so, it. And I will, I will were, call that person out on our show. They were, yeah. They were seemingly into the occult, into the dark stuff like we all are over here. They wore and, black clothes. They right. To Metallica. But hey, I do too. So I love Metallica. Well, not as much anymore, but you know. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> Rob Zombie, that's my man. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, but I think that whoever actually committed the crime knew of these three boys. They were pretty well known in the area. And I think that they they put the bodies in that fashion to make it appear that it would be something they did. You know what um, I mean? I don't want to give too much away. But yeah. Um, yeah, so. I do have a question for you, though. Out of all of the the stories you've done or the the episodes, what's been your, let's say your favorite number one. Hmm. Good. I don't, you know, I've never thought about that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite. Um, I don't know. What has been your most, like, what's the one that you absolutely a hundred percent call bullshit on? Oh, what I call bullshit. Let's see. There's a lot of them. Um, I think ooh, the the James Ray one, he's a cult leader. He was, and he's one of those charismatic leaders that try to, like, you know, follow me. And it, it, it total bullshit, total bullshit. I've heard that he's not in jail anymore and that he's probably got another cult going. So, what? Go check that one out. Yeah. Um, out. Though, going back to my favorite one, I think I know which one. It's a conspiracy one. It's the Twitter flight 371. So this pothead sitting in his driveway after work, he's smoking, you know, nice big fatty in the driveway in his car. And I can't remember now if it, it was a voicemail or something that came through on his phone. Oh, that was that the Malaysian the, flight? The what? Yeah. And it, it's so this, this voicemail is, um, what's it call it the the nato phonetic alphabet you know delta 
whatever, yeah. you know. And he's like, what the hell? So um, he kind of translates it and it says danger SOS it is dire for you to evacuate be cautious they are not human and that was I remember. was what came over the black box on flight 370 and I somehow no like how would it be like somehow, this random guy yeah, it came, a voicemail came to this kid and he actually ended up going into hiding because people were, it was just crazy. He had um, government officials coming after him and yeah, go listen to Unexplained Realms. That episode I listen to that one. season two. I or remember three. when the, the that plane went missing one. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, my whole thing was, how do you lose a whole fucking airplane? Yeah. I don't know. I'm telling you that one though. Um, there was a lot of people though that that came for him on that one and it was i can imagine pretty terrifying but that was definitely my favorite one because you're like could this really be like is this really i mean how did this end up with him you know so yeah like why him I, yeah. okay i have a question since we're over here we're talking what is your take on the woman on the plane oh Every, you know what I'm that talking guy's about. guy's not real. Real. Um, I don't know. Like, it's so hard I, to say. It's a possibility she saw something. I mean, I I do this show, so obviously my mind is very open to things like that. I she went down seen such something. a rabbit hole. Okay. But the I problem with it is I saw her footage of her in the airport afterwards, and it just felt like she might have been a little drunk. So I mean, okay, I we went. We saw the footage of her in the airport after they removed her from the plane. Okay, um, she was very combative I, and not actually like somebody was scared. Hold on, though. In in that, so I fell on the TikTok rabbit hole. Okay, mm -hmm. and I really, truly, genuinely, because she even in the airport, her combativeness was, please don't let that plane take off um maybe it, yeah. so th there was another video from someone that had, they posted it on tiktok uh, and she was in the airport and they were escorting her and she was like no don't let that plane leave. there was i just felt like there was a genuine fear now do i believe that maybe she sat in the airport lounge and had one too many gin martinis and maybe <laughs> she thinks she saw something yeah I, Possibly, but there yeah. was a genuine to me there was a genuine fear um, that she expressed, but I fell down a TikTok rabbit hole. Then it got me thinking there's like lizard people walking around with <laughs> in their eyelids. Yeah, or, I don't know. I did, I did a whole show on that too. The lizard, the lizard people cult. Okay. This lady, Sherry, some Sherry Shiner, she had a whole lizard people cult. Like instead believe, of their eyes yeah. doing this, they're like, this. yeah, no, that she had these people <laughs> believing that there were lizard people and that you have to kill them. And it was just, just go listen to Unexplained Realms. I have to go catch that. <laughs> I just I don't know interviewing you, lady. Like I'm over here getting Sorry. interviewed by you, though. <laughs> so. a seat. No, I just want to know. I think it's really funny because my big thing, with the chick at the it, on the plane, that was just that was fucking wild. I probably yeah. had I heard her acting like that. I'm not gonna lie. There's a part of me that probably would have been like, I'd like to get off the plane too. This bitch mm -hmm. has lost her mind. Or there's a lizard person back here. I don't know, but. Right. Maybe I don't need to fly today. Like, mm -hmm. thankfully the plane did make to their destination and they were fine. But I, I don't know. I, I had questions about that one. It's it's that's a that one's still up in the air. I think. Um, I would imagine authorities know more about what really happened there. I don't know. So, which not telling I mean, us. Mm. I'm sure they do. They know a lot of the shit they don't tell us. Mm. I'm a conspiracy theory nut. That's why I love unexplained. I love conspiracy <laughs> theories. It drives my husband fucking insane. That's funny. Uh, mine dives down the rabbit holes with me because, like mine I said, don't. he's the director. He's been, um, I don't know, involved in unexplained realms since day one. It literally. Uh, how do I say he came up with the name and the concept and I was just writing I was just writing and like this is 
kind of his baby too. So he's he's right there with me. <laughs> Mine I think there is, could be I lizard everybody. people. I don't know. <laughs> mine is not so i'll start like i'll be like okay about that and he's like i don't have i don't have the energy for your bullshit today uh, he, doesn't, call me. <laughs> he doesn't get into the true crime thing he like every now and then will find something that like intrigues him and he'll watch mm. it or whatever but he's not like he come home one day and so he works offshore and he comes home every tv in the house is on like wives with knives and he's like have i done I something have i made you mad are you <laughs> <Right>? okay <laughs> and i'm like yeah mm. like, well, like um he's over know. here showing me his phone him and his he is in love with jody arias that woman would have oh my him. god well then you know what mister you get whatever you deserve because I, that lady's that a killer is, it's crazy he was yes. like i love he has watched everything about her, every documentary, and I'm just she's cute and all, but like, like cute in a feral cat kind of way, a rabid fucking dumpster. squirrel, yeah. where yeah, burning he dumpster fire. He, he yeah. was like, I love her, and I'm like, but you know what? He says that, but then that goes back to Mon, bitch. I am obsessed with Bundy. I know, I know this. I yeah, <sighs> I I have no words. <laughs> you guys, like are- I okay. Let me tell you. So the joke is in my house. Uh, I have too many kinks for um, haunted houses and haunted attractions. You let a man in a mask grab me by my throat, and I'm gonna be like, "Ooh, harder!" <laughs> like I am, I am not yeah. like capable of. I mean come on you've seen the you've seen him yeah uh, uh-huh. yeah i know <laughs> you've seen uh-huh. and i know that he's gonna hear this and know i'm talking about him i don't care listen we'll just say both the men in your life are like damn it right. <laughs> just say yeah, right Ugh. and so Lucky. yeah my my masked men are mm-hmm. <laughs> but no like i i think it's I think that's part of the reason I do love true crime is it's always been kind of my thing Mm -hmm. and it it's something that I was really into I read when I was a I don't know preteen and teen and was in I read hundreds Mm -hmm. of books a year um I do too yeah and I remember the first true crime but it wasn't really true crime it's based on a real place and I remember the first one I ever read, and it was Patricia Cornwell's The Body Farm. Mm-hmm. And I was hooked. Mm, good stuff. So, yeah, my crime, crazy. And then you being into conspiracy theories, I get to be like, oh, my God, what do you think of this? I know, yeah. He is like, bitch, shut up. <laughs> did So, I don't know, you've seen the new dark history category on Unexplained, but we did the Radium Girls. That was a lot of fun. That was um, wild. I listened to and, that, and I yeah. actually went, after I listened to it, and then went and looked up, like, some of the um, pictures. And Oh, yeah. They had food products. Oh. And they were putting radiation in. I was like, "Are oh you God. kidding? Like crazy!" Well, and they would lick the the, mm, brush the paintbrush and like yeah. her, like their faces and God, that their was- faces, their their jawbones just started disintegrating, and their skin was holding it in as it as it like. So, yeah. I was like, when I listened to it, and I was like, oh, maybe it's a little exaggerated. Maybe like the stories are exaggerated, and then mm-hmm. I, I was like. The more I read, and I mind blown. Yeah. Well, that's like what it, uh, the whole Mad Hatter thing. They called it Mad Hatters because they would go, they would go crazy from like the glues and and things that were in the hats that they were making. And yeah. that was so that's something you, that's coming up too on dark the dark. Oh, are you going to do that one? That's yeah. awesome. So just trying to play around with the categories. This week will be the internet, and it's like I said, creepy pasta and and uh, laughing Jack. The story of laughing. That Jack. is my kid's yeah. favorite. Mine too. Pasta. He's the one that came up with this one. But um, you just can't go under urban legends because these are not legends. These are current time horror short stories that 
amazing young people create and uh, I think it deserves to be in the internet category so and like I told you I have a ton that I'm obviously for Mm -hmm. urban legend wise uh, you know we have Mm -hmm. the Robert Johnson one that I can't wait for you to do I think you're gonna you're gonna Mm -hmm. dive into that one and be like oh my god this is so wild and I have pictures for days I've actually um, spent so much time so you've heard us talk about or you've heard me talk about or being in Florida or hanging out with John and them in the band mm. and they came to be in the Delta. That's where the band originated at was in the Delta. Um, and one of the members still lives not far from that area, um, like maybe five minutes. And so mm. I've been through there and then stopped. And so it's going to be a really fun one. I think you're going to love it when you fall into that. Definitely. Article. Well, unfortunately, we've you know, well, we've come over the over the hour mark, so I'm going to have to wrap this up. But um, you guys, go find Cocktails and Crime. Um, I actually was driving the other day and had Spotify on, and it actually suggested that I listen to Cocktails and Crime. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> well, I'll you know to myself. what? I'll listen to myself so, yeah, talk. Um, it's also over on iHeart, Amazon Music, um, really anywhere you get podcasts. I've, yeah, basically wherever you can get podcasts. You're on Apple Podcasts, all this fun stuff. So, um, if people ask me, I go, hold on, I have to text uh, my <laughs> producer. I have no idea. I know that we're on <laughs> Spotify. Well, hey, you're everywhere. We're everywhere you can find a podcast. You can find Cocktails and Crime as well as Unexplained Realms. So, yes. Um, you guys and hopefully our out. goal, our goal is mm-hmm. maybe 2025 cocktails and crimes will be at Crime Con. Fingers Yay. crossed. I really, there. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, go check that out and show Nikki some love. And um, I guess just stay weird, my friends. Right. Oh. Or stay spooky. Yep. Stay spooky. All right. Thank you for coming on, Nikki. Absolutely. Thanks. We'll talk soon. Yes. <laughs>